In this week's of the module, week three, we will be exploring three big overarching concepts um, that we will be revisiting throughout the module. Evolution, behavior, and sustainability. We'll start with the big concept of sustainability. What is actually sustainability? It's a term that we hear a lot, we're using it a lot today, but let's think a little bit deeper and more concrete about what this term actually means. We can first do that by collecting some ideas, brainstorming, how would we define this concept? What kind of things might we associate with it or what characterizes sustainability? Here are just some things that might come up when we explore these questions. It might be about more concrete things like not overusing resources that we depend on, but it might also be about more general um, conceptualizations like the ability to persist for a long time, um, ability to maintain a livable environment, or really the ability to live or even thrive in a way that doesn't undermine future chances of survival and well-being. And also a very general way to think about it is the ability of a system or of an organism, which is also a system to persist and be resilient. So these are just some ideas that might come up when we think about this concept of sustainability. Now, commonly, when we're thinking about the sustainability of our society and the planet Earth, um, we're often considering like different dimensions, often that includes ecological, social, including cultural, political sustainability, as well as economic sustainability. And these are all interconnected, intertwined, and the challenge and the aim is to take into account sustainability in all these different dimensions. Another thing that we can think about is that sustainability can really be looked at and addressed on different levels of organizations. We could be thinking about the sustainability of an individual's um, behavior and well-being. For example, what kind of decisions do we make in our everyday, in our own lives regarding our own well-being? Or the sustainability of a group of people, for example, a working group or an organization, or a species, an ecosystem, even a whole planet. Another way to distinguish sustainability is that we can also look at it or address it on different dimensions of time. So we could be interested about just tomorrow and the next year until 2030. That is a current very prominent time mark for now and so on, even forever, whatever that, that means. Now, the concept of sustainability, maybe you have come across this, it is sometimes criticized and some people prefer other concepts. Some of them are resilience or regeneration. We can think about why might it be um, that people might prefer one of those concepts over another? What do they actually have in common and how, how are they different? So this is another way to um, think about concepts to, to consider how are they a little bit different from very related concepts. So you might think about this in your own head for a little bit. Now, to think about the relationships between these three concepts, we find this quote quite helpful. It's from this publication. And it says that the term sustainability, we can ha understand it as having two connotations or two meanings. First, sustainability is a goal state that includes the maintenance or regeneration, if we're not there yet, of the environment and human well-being. Second, sustainability also means the durability of a given state over time. That is, its resilience to perturbation. And however, not all resilient states are desirable, nor are all desirable states resilient. And human values must determine the desired state, whereas science must determine the process to achieve and maintain that state. Now, if you want, you can stop the video and, and try to explain and summarize in your own words what you think this quote means. But really then, uh, also coming back to then sustainability education, we can think of sustainability, how do we get it? It's first about being aware of our goals and values and 
using those to identify the preferred states of our systems that we're a part of, or even the preferred future states. Then we need to understand the system that can create or that maintains those states. And then we need to be able to influence the system towards cre creating or maintaining those states. This then can be linked to really those competencies in education for sustainable development that we want to develop. So in terms of really thinking about what is the kind of preferred states of the system, of society, ecosystems, and so on that we actually want, that requires evaluation competency, future thinking competency. In terms of really understanding the system that creates or maintains or makes it difficult to create those states, that needs systems thinking competency, also interdisciplinary thinking competency. And the same for influencing the system, we also need systems thinking, interdisciplinary thinking, but also, again, evaluation competency to see how are we doing, cooperation and self-regulation competency to really enact together with others and change our behaviors uh, in terms of really achieving those desired states. So this is one way how we can think about what sustainability is really about and the kind of competencies we need to achieve this. Now, regarding the goals that we want to achieve and sustain, there are several frameworks that are around that we can use to kind of use as a common communication and understanding tool about what we might students and others to focus on in terms of understanding certain problems and improving on them. One of them that you might have heard about is the Sustainable Development Goals. They have been identified by the United Nations in 2015, and they are a collection of 17 goals that we want to achieve by 2030. And they cover all kinds of things, uh, including ecological sustainability goals, like climate action, life on land, but also social sustainability goals like quality education and equality, and economic goals such as industry, infrastructure, and so on. So these sustainability, sustainable development goals, they're really, we can understand them as goals that we as a common yeah, global society want to achieve and then sustain. It doesn't mean that there can't be discussions about what might change about them in the in the future. So they're open to criticism and reflection, of course. And the thing is also that they're not standing isolated from each other, but they all interact in complex ways. And this is something important we have to understand. And they all also require cooperation. This is actually something that's integrated in a goal 17 partnerships for the goals on different levels. Still, some people criticize these SDGs as a roadmap to a sustainable world. And we can think about wh why might, might that be. Here is also an interesting survey that was done uh, on the internet where people around the world could participate to say what are their own priorities in terms of these 17 sustainable development goals. Unfortunately, the, the survey is not available anymore. But we can think about what is maybe interesting about these global results and what's surprising. Um, to me, something surprising was that a good education was coming up as the primary uh, goal across all these different people from many different countries. And interestingly, things like action taken on climate change was the one that, that had the least priority. That, of course, tells us something about some of the challenges in really addressing big global issues. Here you can get some more resources and ideas for also exploring the survey with and doing it with students in the classroom. Another framework that has become popular and that we think is also very useful is that of the so-called donut economics. And why is it called donut economics? It's because of this ring or, or circle. And so it is about um, defining an ecological ceiling that we shouldn't cross, um, defined by things like ecological boundaries, like climate change, ozone layer depletion, air pollution, and so on. So we wouldn't, we shouldn't overshoot um, the, these boundaries. And then there's also a social foundation that we should achieve. Things like health, food, 
but also equality, peace and justice, and so on. And the thing is then that the economy should be in the service of achieving the social foundation and also of not overshooting the ecological ceiling. So we want to achieve a regenerative and distributive economy. And so therefore to make sure that we are living in a safe and just space for humanity. Some people also like the donut economics framework because it really kind of gives a better sense and pays more attention to the social um, foundation, the social sustainability challenges where it really looks at um, how to enable, empower and connect citizens. But of course, this, the, so the sustainable development goals and donor economics, they are somewhat related. For example, we can put some of the sustainable development goals pretty easily onto some of those dimensions of the donut, but there are also some differences. So with the help of this donut, we can, for example, analyze and compare different countries regarding how they are doing. A helpful tool for this is this website where you can create these donut images for almost pretty much all the countries in the world. And for example, countries like Germany, we can see that their challenge is really to um, yeah, reduce the ecological overshoot. Like here we see really in the red area, um, the country is not doing very well. On the other hand, when it comes to the social foundation, almost all things um, are going pretty well. Then um, in comparison, countries like Madagascar, we see that certainly um, they're not having problems with overshooting any of the ecological ceiling, except for land use change. So a lot of deforestation going on in places like Madagascar. And the problem is where it's def the, the deficit lies in um, yeah, satisfying the social foundation of, of citizens. And then we also have countries like Costa Rica, which is somewhere in between and something to look at. How do they achieve it? So it's not yet overshooting too much the ecological foundations. And it's also at the same time not doing too bad in terms of satisfying the social foundation of its citizens. So really what we want to achieve across all countries is to bring everybody, bring every country into this green circle and without any of the red um red stuff here. Another interesting thing uh, uh, that the donor economics community has created is this um, city portrait idea. So it is about how can we downscale the donut to levels below a country or below the world, really to the level of um, organizations or institutions or a city. And so helpful for this is a general framework like this, where we ask uh, on the social dimension and the local scale, what would it mean for people of the school or city or institution to thrive? And also what would it mean for school, for the school or city to respect the well-being of people worldwide? And on the ecological dimension, what would it mean for the school or city, institution and so on to thrive within its natural habitat? And what would it mean for the school or city to respect the health of the whole planet? And so they're collecting different kinds of analytical tools to help make progress and evaluate also how is our city, our school, and so on doing. Mm -hmm.